Hey folks, welcome back to Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin. We're here in the Shrine of Amana, and uh, we are coming close to the end of the area. We've just got one little, uh, you know, fun bag of enemies here, and then a boss, and then we'll be good to go. But this little fun bag of enemies is uh, a little bit tricky. It's got a lot of different factors all making it harder for you. First things first. There is a priestess right there. She is going to start chucking spells at you pretty darn quick. Uh, basically as soon as she sees you. Um, which means you're going to want to be aggressive and attack her as soon as possible. And really, ranged attacks are the way to go for, uh, for this encounter. Because uh, there are a lot of factors that make melee not an enticing option. Um, you can see the sparkles, the fireflies, indicating that there are uh, aquatic hollows. It is waist-deep water, which will uh, slow down your movement a lot. Um, you've got the priestesses, who can attack from a distance. There's just a ton of enemies. And uh, it's just overall a, a tricky time. Now, you can see what this uh, this Archdrake is doing. He's got a shield up, and he's going to keep it up basically um, until we get into melee range and he starts attacking us. And unfortunately, that means we cannot do a whole lot of range damage to him. And on top of that, as you can see, that Priestess moved behind him. He, uh, he serves as kind of a meat shield for her. That's some... Surprisingly sophisticated AI for Dark Souls, which is usually just the enemy runs up at you and swings. Um, but that would seem to imply, you know, a relationship between the Archdrake and the Priestess. You know, uh, Archdrake's protecting the Priestesses and, and serving the Priestesses as best they can. Uh, Alright, we're going to have to get in melee range for this guy. But there is one more priestess, and it looks like she's gonna attack us before the Archdrake does, so let's hide and see if we can de-aggro her a little bit. Hmm. Doesn't look like it. Oh, there we go. Okay. And sneaky sneaky. Got her. Okay. Now, Mr. Archdrake, come at me. Basically gotta wait for him to attack, and somehow that still hit his shield. Not sure what's up with that. Maybe I have to attack with my left hand. Oh, don't do this. You're better than this. There we go. All right. Um, so if you look behind you, first off, that guy dropped some. And there is an item hidden on the side of uh, this cliff face. If you don't look back, you'll miss a soul. Now, I believe we can grab all of these, uh, these items in the water without disturbing the aquatic hollows. Oh, hey, there's another priestess. How did I miss her? Whatever, let's uh, get up close and personal with her. No, not you. There we go. Okay, looks like he's been pacified again. Good. Um, so, as I was saying, we can grab all these without uh, aggroing. The water dudes. Got a petrified dragon mode on that last one, which is good for me. Still up upgrading that uh, barbed club. This is the, the thing I'm most excited about, or I would be if I were going to use it. The red iron twin blade. It is a uh, it's a very heavy weapon with some pretty high strength requirements and decks. 
Twin blade with heavy blades on each end, more suited to smashing foes than slashing them. Requires a great deal of muscle to wield artfully. The twin blade closely imitates the design of a foreign-made weapon that has blades affixed to both ends of its hilt. Um, I think that might refer to the country that Alon is from. I'm not 100% certain on that. There's more Alon lore yet to come, and uh, I don't know it super well. There's also a spell here, Homing Crystal Soul Mass. Its description is very boring. Soul beads made more lethal with crystallization. When fired, they home in on their target. Crystallization makes souls and sorceries all the more powerful. It's exactly what you would expect from the title. Alright, so there's one other tricky thing in this arena, and uh, I'm not entirely sure where the flag for it is. Usually what I do is I walk over here, and then I walk back the way I came. And that causes Peculiar Kindler to spawn, who is an NPC invader with a couple of nasty tricks up his sleeve. Um, and usually what I do is I run back here into... Whoopsie. Um, into safety of dry land, where I don't have to try to dodge spells in, uh, in waist-deep water. Now, Peculiar Kindler, the main thing is that, uh, one, I believe he has Homing Crystal whole Soul Mass, and two, he has a bunch of Hexes. Now, Hexes are, uh, I'm not sure how they play for NPC invaders. For humans, they require uh, both intelligence and faith. They run off the weaker of the two stats, and the stronger ones tend to cost souls. Um, I don't know if he's using any that cost souls, and if he is, I don't know how they calculate the damage for that, or the, the ammo, rather. Now, I'm being aggressive here because he likes to play defensive, and if I try to attack him from range, it's just not going to work out. Um, he has a shield, and doesn't honestly take that much damage from uh, ranged weaponry. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Now, the downside, as you saw there, is that he can get a point-blank shot of a pretty strong spell. Which, uh, can kill you if you're even a little bit below full health, like I was in several previous recordings. But we're good. Priestess skirt, hey. I don't think that drops every time. I haven't seen it in previous recordings. Let's... See what that's about. Oh, it's just the just the same as the the priestesses out here. Which I don't know, maybe that indicates that the the Kindler, I've already forgotten the first word of the name, um, is someone who may be defected from the priesthood or something. Cause they were using hexes, not just simple sorceries. So maybe a fallen priestess who uh, dabbled into the dark arts. Uh, nice set piece here. A root coming down from that big central tree and just straight up stabbing into, uh, into a fallen building. Like, uh, nature is winning. Nature is gonna, gonna win out here. Anyway, we are just about to the uh, the boss here. Now, we've been hearing singing all throughout this last section. And uh, previously in the area, we learned that the singing comes from the Milfinito. But this Milfinito isn't doing so well. In fact, I think maybe gone completely. But she's not the one who is singing. The singing was coming from behind the boss gate. Interesting. 
And we're going to take on that boss in just a moment in this episode. But first, I got to grab my summons. All right. It's time to take on the boss. We have brought Lone Hunter Schmidt and Felicia the Brave along with us. Now, this is a boss fight that, uh, for me, either goes really well or really badly. Um, I'm hoping it goes really well. This is the Demon of Song. Makes sense. This is a place with a lot of singing. And it's this kind of disgusting frog creature that pulls its skin over its, its weird human-like face. And then has long, gangly arms that it uses to attack. Now, the thing is, uh, Felicia is kind of lousy in this fight, I'm pretty sure. Because, you know, she's brave and courageous and a little bit um, stupid. She just kind of stands right in the way of attacks. And will get uh, attacked quite a bit. Anyway, as you might expect, the weak point for the Demon of Song is its face... Um, so what you'll have to do is dodge its attacks and then get in close, slash its face a few times before it pulls the skin back over its head, and then, uh, and then rinse and repeat. Yeah, Felicia, you're bad at this, I'm sorry. At least, at least she has a little bit of Estus. That'll, that'll do the trick. Now, the main tricky thing, by Felicia. Uh, main tricky thing with regards to um, Demon of Song is, one, it can do occasional like projectile attacks. Two, you have to remember how long its combos are, which is like, you know, Dark Souls 101. But I, I seem like I have trouble. Um, differentiating its different combos apart. So there are times when it just does that two-hit combo, when I'm expecting a longer one, or it'll do a very long combo, and seem like it has an opening, and it's actually going to hit me one more time. Schmidt, you could probably take a step back. Like, you don't got to be there. You're, you're an archer. I don't think I've ever seen that move. That's cool as hell. <laughs> Probably easy to dodge if you know it's coming. But I didn't. Alright, come on. Belly flop. Oh, way to ram yourself up against a wall there. Got a tail slam too. Interesting, interesting. All these moves that I don't think I ever see. Usually when I'm fighting him alone, he just kind of does the same, like two or three hit combo every time. He does this one. But anyway, that's the demon of song. It wasn't too bad this time. And for defeating it, you get the Demon of Song Soul and the key to the Embedded. Let's check out that key first so I don't forget about it. Now, the key to the Embedded isn't actually a key in a mechanical sense. I mean, it, it does unlock a door or something similar to a door, um, but it's a weapon rather than a key. It's a sword that opens the Embedded's door. Shaped like a weapon, but is in fact a key, but is in fact used as a weapon. Plunge the key into the embedded to bring a rhapsodic end to his fate. That's a word you don't usually, you know, use to describe death. Rhapsodic, that's awesome. Um, the once human embedded, realizing that he could never resist the temptations of the flesh, bound himself eternally with chains. Since then, he has awaited the day that somebody will find this key and bury it within his bosom. So, kind of a self-imposed punishment, self-imposed torture thing going on in there. 
Um, better story than Kingdom Hearts is what I'll say. Then also, the Demon of Song Soul. When this demon developed a taste for human flesh, it was contained within the shrine of Amana. But the line of priestesses who looked after the shrine and appeased the creature have died off. Um, I mean, they seemed fine to me when I was killing them, but oh well. So yeah, it was... It started eating humans, and people were like, whoa, that's not good. Let's imprison it so that it can't do that anymore. Um... But then the people who were, like, keeping it imprisoned kind of died, and it started using that siren song um, that you heard it singing to lure people in that it could eat. Uh, and I think the, uh, the weapon that you can make from this soul kind of explores that a little bit more, but I kind of already talked about it when I talked about Roy. So, anyway. I uh, also just want to appreciate this boss arena. It's very... Hey, what are you doing there? Get down. It's a very nice arena. Got waterfalls, got these cool spires. I don't know exactly how those get formed, but they're very cool. Um, and just, the you know, water looks very nice in this game. It's got good reflections going on. And you got the... The possibly volumetric god rays coming up from above. That stark contrast. Looks very nice. And it's it's bluish green rather than, you know, gray. So even though it's muted, it's still very colorful. Anywho, let's head out of here. And we are basically done with the Shrine of Amana. This is... This is the wrong exit, isn't it? Yes, it is. Whoops. <laughs> Over there. This is where we want to go. Yeah, that's more like it. A little winding path. Out into here. And there's another butterfly. And I might have to go through here. Now, I said we were almost basically done with the Shrine of Amana, because there's actually one little small optional branch off of it that we have yet to explore. Ooh, that... If you weren't already dead, that would have hurt. Um, if you're not interested, you can just go straight through this door here. I think. Maybe. Um, but there's also a side path. So, I'm going to take care of these basilisks. Oh. Um. Take care of these basilisks, and then I will save that side path for the next episode. Actually, I'm going to grab that item so I don't forget. So, in the next episode of Dark Souls 2, we will uh, we'll take down this statue, we'll get that bonfire, and we'll find the source of that last song. But until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all next time.